Hey guys, Tom Shu here, also known as AK Freak, and today I want to give you a quick tutorial on the Sparky board with S Bus. That's right, Sparky supports S Bus. Now you don't need any kind of inverter to invert the signal, and you don't have to have an FTDI adapter to do any kind of crazy stuff to reprogram your FreeSky S Bus receiver or anything like that. It's native in Sparky. The code has inverts everything for you. It's similar, SBUS is similar to that PPM where you use a converter with your NAS board, but with Sparky, the SBUS gives you 16 channels with a 4 or 8 channel receiver. It's pretty slick. So let's see how this works. What you need to do is you need to go into your command line. Let's do that by plugging in our Sparky. Let's go ahead and connect it up. Now we're going to let it initialize. It'll give you three flashes. All right. And we're going to hit connect. If you don't wait for the board to initialize, it's going to give you a really laggy response and stuff. So we don't want that to happen. So just let it initialize, then uh, hit connect. Go to your command line. And there's three things you got to do. Is you have to turn on RX serial you need to configure that port it's a port 3 and the scenario equals 3 and you need to set your serial RX provider to 2 now all this information's in the documentation at clean flight github but I thought I might just offer it to you straight up so you understand it a little better now command line is just like the DOS operating system disk operating system of a PC except the command line controls on your microprocessor on your flight controller it doesn't have all the flexibility as DOS or anything like that and if you want to know what you can do if you type dump down here in the little editor window it will tell you everything that's set on your board and all of the features that you can adjust in command line so if you come up here to your feature list you can see that any feature that's not enabled has a minus sign next to it and every um, feature that doesn't have a minus sign is enabled. Now to enable a feature, you just type feature and then what it is you want to enable. For example, if you want to enable feature RX serial, that's it. You type it in, you hit enter, and it says enabled RX serial. Now let's go back up here again and let's look at this right here now if you look at this serial port 3 scenario equals 3 by default that will be 0 to set that you just type it in or paste it in however you want and again by default yours would be 0 we're gonna type in 3 now this configures the port and you might be asking well how do you know what port is what and how to configure it well if you look at the documentation at github it will tell you under the S bus that the serial port 3 is your receiver port on the Sparky board I'm sorry if you go to the Sparky board documentation it will tell you that your serial port is 3 and you need to set it to scenario 3 so you click enter and it sets that for you now we need to deal with the provider so if we go back up there again and we're gonna look and this is just if you don't know what you're supposed to be doing or where it is or you don't like typing you can come up here and paste and grab and paste it so we're gonna find our um, their serial port and we're looking for serial RX provider and again by default it would be zero just like that and you want to set it to two okay now what we've done down here is we've turned on our RX serial and we've changed the scenario to three port three the RX port to three and uh, we've set the provider to two now this is all configuration code for your ports that Dominic has done in coding which is different in a lot of uh, other pieces of configuration software you may have used you have the flexibility to change what ports are what on the NAS board and uh, also the Sparky so if you type save here it will go ahead and save everything to your board and disconnect I don't want to do that since mine's already set up so I'll just go ahead and just disconnect okay I'm gonna unplug 
my sparky board. I'm going to plug it back in. I'm going to let it initialize. Give me the three flashes. I'm good to connect. And now if we go into the receiver, you can see that we've got all these channels. These are 16 channels, 4 plus 12. And if I turn on my radio... We'll let it latch on because my receiver's in failsafe mode right now. And you can see that I've got there's my throttle, there's my rudder, the yaw, there's the aileron, and there's the elevator. Okay. Now, if, for instance, when I first started up, it was telling me that um, my roll was my throttle. If that's the case, you want to come over here to your drop down menu and click on JR Spectrum Gropner slash Tyrannus and then click save and it will refresh it and map that for you. You can also do that in the command line. You can change it. Now what you would be changing is throttle, aileron, elevator, rudder, one, two, three, four. And how you determine that is if you go into your um, monitor, your channel monitor, and you move your throttle you can see that it's on channel one okay so that'd be throttle on one and then if you move your aileron you'll see that that's channel two so it'd be aileron two and then elevator if you move the elevator stick that'd be elevator three and then you move your rudder you'll see that your rudder is on four now by default all of the channels are not mapped inside the Tyrannus radio however I did map the left slider to channel 12 just to show you we have 16 channels go in and set everything else up and you're good to go there now one quick note about sparky boards and working with them on your bench before you put it in your quadcopter you might want to you know set up your receiver and play with things in the clean flight However, to get the receiver to work with the USB cable and nothing else plugged to it, you got to do a couple things. First off, let me say there's two different types of Sparky boards. There's a 1.0 and a 1.1. The 1.0 board has got four pins. Sorry about that. I had to turn off that alarm. The 1.0 board has four pins. And the 1.1 board has three pins on the receiver. What that does on the 1.1, it lets you use a standard servo plug. And then it uses some pads that you solder to determine if your power wire is 3 volts or 5 volts. Now, if you're plugged up to your USB cable, your USB cable does not supply 5 volts to that pin. On 1.1, there's four pins. There's a VCC, which is your five volts. That's the one you want to use when you're flying with your receiver to get the proper power to your transmitter. Um, but if you want to power with the USB, you need to move that jumper from the VCC to the 3.3 volts. That will power up your receiver on your board from the USB cable without having to do any other silly stuff like trying to power the ESC rail and get the receiver working. So that's it. I hope this video was helpful. If you guys have any questions, don't hesitate to jump on the IRC chat, which is hashtag or the number sign clean flight on the free node of IRC. Or you can also drop into the FPV Lab official clean flight thread. Um, they're just about every day, and it's a pretty active thread. There's some good folks there that can help you out. So that's it. I hope you all have a great day. Until next time, we'll see you soon.